You see them on the weather map all the time. What do they mean? What's an easy way to remember what they generally bring in regards to our weather? Well, an easy way to remember high pressure and low pressure is high pressure gives us happy weather, sunny skies, dry weather, nice weather, and low pressure gives us stormy weather, clouds, precipitation. Now, high pressure and low pressure. It's not something we normally talk about every day in the weather, and mm, for good reason, doesn't really uh, play much into what we experience, whether it's sunny or whether it's rainy. But it is vital. It's vital in the winds that we have. We wouldn't have winds without high and low pressure. And you notice this when you open up a can of tuna fish that is pressurized. Inside the tuna can, low pressure. As soon as you crack it open, you hear that whoosh. That is wind, air blowing in from the atmosphere into the can because the atmosphere is an area of higher pressure than in the vacuum-packed can. So you notice that. And then, of course, after it pressurizes, you don't hear the whoosh anymore, and the wind stops. So differences between high and low pressure, those are what drive the wind. It's also what makes it so that the equator isn't getting hotter and hotter, and the poles aren't getting colder and colder. It's because of the wind that is transporting heat across the world. All right, now we're going to be looking at high and low pressure. And what I want you to think about is that we are in an atmospheric ocean. Uh, we have the ocean, and as you go deeper and deeper to the bottom of the ocean, what happens? The pressure of that weight of water gets higher and higher. Well, the same thing happens here in the atmospheric ocean. We're at the bottom of the atmospheric ocean. In fact, when there is neither low nor high pressure, when we're right in the middle, we have on average about 14 and a half pounds of pressure pushing down on our heads per square inch. Now you might think, what about a 20 by 20 foot table? Wouldn't that crush it? No, because just as much air pressure is pushing up on the table and on the sides of the table as well. So nature has a way of balancing things out, thankfully. All right, so we know that because high pressure is having pretty much a surplus, too much of something. So that's going to push it towards low pressure. The atmosphere and nature is always looking for balance. What we have with high pressure is we have more atmospheric weight at the bottom, at the surface. And we'll show you that with uh, these atmospheric molecules. Now this is um, mainly going to be uh, nitrogen, oxygen, and also some water vapor. But you can notice that at high pressure, we have more of it packed at the surface and it's evenly distributed as we have low pressure. Well, that, of course, is going to cause winds to blow from high pressure to low pressure. It doesn't do it, though, in a nice straight line. Why? Because our world is spinning. And because we're spinning, this moves in a counterclockwise flow into the low for low pressure. And it moves in a clockwise flow out of high pressure. This is called the Coriolis force. And that is what causes these winds not to move directly from high to low, but in the clockwise pattern, out of high and into low pressure in a counterclockwise pattern. All right, also important to note, as you could tell, this is going to give us uh, some, um, a little bit more clarity on why we have happy weather with high pressure. If the air is moving out of high pressure, something has to fill that void of that air departing or diverging as we use in weather. As that air is moving out, air from aloft has to sink to fill that. The opposite happens with low pressure. Air is piling up or converging into low pressure. So that air can't go in the ground. It has to go up. We have to have air going up in order for us to get clouds, precipitation. So that's why we have usually happy weather with high pressure and low pressure gives us usually rainy weather or stormy weather. And we see that an area of low pressure is the tropical storm system. A hurricane is an area of low pressure. We have some uh, semi-permanent areas of low and high pressure around the world. And you notice it's nice, nice and evenly distributed, low, high, low, high. The equator, that's where we see a lot of the rainforest, ample precipitation. Uh, that uh, will prove our point that low pressure kind of gives us rainy, dreary weather. As we get towards 30 degrees north latitude, that's where you'll find 
the northern hemisphere's deserts around the northern hemisphere. Air is sinking, subsiding, very little precipitation. Then around 60 degrees north latitude, that's where a lot of our storms originate that cross into the valley and into northeast Ohio, western Pennsylvania, out of the west, or the westerly winds that we experience. And that's also where we'll find the jet stream. There's a big difference between air temperature at this latitude. So we also have the air that is going to be rising there. So that's where storms start to develop. Then finally, the North Pole. North Pole is sometimes referred to as a frozen desert. You have sinking air, it's bitter cold, and you have very little in the way of moisture. All right. Weather is highly subjective. You might love six, seven straight days of high pressure, sunny weather, but a farmer is doing a rain dance, praying for rain. So it's highly subjective. Some of the things that high pressure can bring that aren't so good, bitter cold. When you have air sinking and the air aloft is very cold, the air at the surface will start to drop off as well. This is where we get very nice, sunny, but bitter, bitter cold in the winter months. Another thing that high pressure brings that isn't so good, when we get prolonged sinking air, that also causes stagnant air. And when you have pollutants, cars, factories, that causes the air to stay at the surface rather than rising. So a prolonged pressure of high pressure uh, will give us, well, we have air quality alerts sometimes that are issued usually in the summer months. That's stagnant air. Good remedy for an area of high pressure that's causing a pollution outbreak, a good old-fashioned low-pressure system to cause the air to start to rise and dissipate all those pollutants. Thanks for joining us.